All right, we've got some good things going on. We can take damage, but at the moment, even though I can punch, I can't actually hurt my enemy. So in this video, that's where we're headed. We're gonna add some damage dealing so that we can hurt our enemy, as well as a visual punch effect and a knockback. Let's get started. Now, first off, this is not a player controller video. I'm not gonna get into the details of how to make your player attack. In fact, I'm going to assume you have the ability to press a button and play an animation. If you're interested in something more along the lines of a player controller video or series, let me know in the comments and I'll see about adding one of those. Now, let's get it so that we can go from actually playing an animation to dealing that damage. Now, back when we got our enemy attacking, we did it using this eye damageable interface, which just takes in a damage amount and then passes that along to any enemies that are within the attack radius. We used this melee attack state here to find which enemies were nearby. We made an array of colliders, which just detected anybody within range and then looped through any colliders we found to see if they belonged to the eye damageable interface, dealt the knockback, and then the damage. We're going to do something relatively similar here, but with just a little more nuance so we can add different types of attacks and that sort of thing. Before we can actually deal damage to the enemy, we're going to have to set the enemy up to take that damage. So let's head into our enemy state. So one of the first things we need to do is give our enemy a public float called current health. We'll set this up in our stat scriptable object, so let's head there. Up at the top here, we'll just make a new header called general stats, and we can make our public float called max health. For now, let's initialize that to 20. Now in our enemy class, we'll just have to add a start method, and at the start, we'll make our current health equal to our stats dot max health. Now at the start of the game, our enemy's current health will be set to 20, like we did in our stats scriptable object. Now we can actually add this enemy to our eye damageable interface. Now it won't like that at first as we haven't implemented the interface yet, but before we do that, let's actually head over to the interface itself. At the moment we have this damage method that our enemy uses, which just passes an amount, but we want to come up with something a little more nuanced for our player. So we're going to make a void damage, but this time along with a damage amount, we're going to pass along a knockback force and knockback angle as well. With that done, we're now ready to head back to our enemy script where we can implement this interface. You can do that by right-clicking, implement interface, then scroll down to the bottom here. Now we can just close up this first one from our enemies. We're not going to need that, but it does have to stay here. Then we can head down to our new damage method and just make sure that our current health subtracts the damage amount. This is how we're going to lose health. Now we could do like in our enemy where we deal the damage and knockback and everything all from here, but we have a state machine for a reason. So we're gonna make a state that can actually handle all of that and adding the state will allow us to add more customizability as well. So let's pop back into Unity. We can make a new c -sharp script and call this one damaged state. Now while we're here, you may have noticed that you have this new error saying that player health or whatever you called your health script does not implement the interface of I damageable. So Let's follow that error. All we need to do here is add our new damage method and just leave it empty inside of health as the iDamageable interface now has these two different methods. With that done, we can create a new c -sharp script and we'll just call this one damaged state. Now our damaged state, like all of our others, is not mono behavior. So we can get rid of that and add enemy base state, which it will inherit from. We can then get rid of our start and update methods. At this point, I'm just gonna pop into another of our states and borrow the constructor. All we need to do here is change the name so that it matches the name of this script. If you right click on the name of the script now, we can go to quick actions and we're just going to generate our overrides. For the moment, I'll pick everything from enter down and then I really like to have my animation ones down at the bottom as it just makes sense to me to have enter at the top. So I'll just paste those down there. Now we don't have to worry too much about our animation as we already set our animation bool to play and stop in our enemy base state. So what exactly do we want to happen in our damaged state? We've already taken the damage. We have already managed our animation. But the first thing we do want to do once we've entered is apply our knockback. So I'm going to type in apply knockback. Then we'll just pop down to the bottom here and actually create that method. Now before we can apply a knockback, we're going to need to know some information, particularly the knockback force and angle. So we'll just head up to the top here where we can create those variables. We'll make a public float for knockback force and a public vector2 for knockback angle. 
Now we'll change this a little bit later on, but for now, let's set this up for testing purposes. Down in Apply Knockback, let's make it so that our enemy's rigid body velocity is equal to, and here we can just put knockback angle times knockback force. Now so far this is essentially the exact same thing we put for our enemy. The difference is here, by separating it out into the state, we can have each different attack type send in a different angle and force. So we can have an uppercut send an enemy more upward, and other attacks send them more backward. So back in our enemy script then, down at the bottom here, before we actually take away our health, we're going to apply the knockback. So we can do this by using our switch state method. Here we just need to pass in the state that we want to switch to. However, at the moment, we've not yet initialized our state, and so it's not going to recognize it. So up at the top, where we initialize all our states, we'll just make a new public damage state called damaged state. And then we can actually do the initialization in awake, saying damage states equal to a new damage state. We'll pass in this script. And for the animation boolean, let's just call it damaged. With that little fix, we can now type in damage state here as the state we'd like to switch to. So now the only thing remaining here is for us to pass along the force and angle. We can do this by accessing our damage state and then telling its knockback force that it should be equal to this knockback force. We'll do the same thing for angle. And this just passes along the information from our damageable interface all the way down to our damage state where it applies it. Now back in Unity, let's take a look at our attack animation. Now, how you attack isn't important, but what we are going to do is unlike our enemy, where we've used a overlap circle to detect anything in front of the enemy, for a player we want something more precise. So I've added a Circle Collider 2D here, and what I've just done is made it so that as my player attacks, it expands, so that at the point of impact, it is directly in front of him looking for enemies, and then after impact, it closes. This will allow us to detect enemies at the point of contact and not before or afterwards. Now this next part's a little tricky because I want this to be able to be used with any player controller and I'm not giving you a specific one here. That said, I'll show you how I'm triggering the attack and you can adapt that to fit with your own or you can just copy mine. So first off, I'm going to create a new c -sharp script and I'm just going to call this one player attack. Again, if you already have an attack, you can just head into that script and adapt it. Now inside of this script, we're just going to use an on trigger enter 2D method to detect when the animated collider hits an enemy or really hits anything. Once we've hit something with our trigger, we actually want to check to see if it belongs to the iDamageable interface. And for this, we can really borrow this code straight out of our melee attack state. We can just paste it in, and we'll just change it to collision.getComponent as we're going to check the objects we've collided with. Now, if we hit a trigger and it happens to belong to iDamageable, we'll put if damageable does not equal null, so we actually found something. We're now ready to apply the knockback. Now in our enemy, we did this with a line right here before passing in the damage amount. But this time we're gonna switch that up just a little bit. First, let's trigger our damageable interface. We'll call damageable.damage. Now here we need to actually pass along the amount of damage. Now for the moment, we don't have a way to get that information, so I'm just gonna hard code some numbers. We'll do five damage, five knockback force, and for our vector two, Let's just create a new vector 2, which will have an angle of 1, 1. So that just means to the right and upward. Now back in Unity, we want to apply this script. And it's important that we actually apply it to whatever our animated object is. So in my case, I have a weapon child object of my player that actually has the circle collider on it. And so that's where I want to put this script. But if it's the player itself you've animated to do the attack, you can put your script there. Additionally, we want to make sure our enemy has health, so let's click on the enemy game object. We can select our stat scriptable object, open that up, and make sure that max health is actually set. And again, this will be embarrassingly imperfect, but we can still test it out. First off, if I come to the other side of the robot, I can deal damage and he still moves to the right. Also, he gets stuck in his damage state as he has no way to exit it currently. Though, I'm also dealing damage just by walking close to him. That's simply because our circle collider, though incredibly small, is still out in front of us, and we need to actually turn it off for this to work. All right, so we are off to a good start, but we've definitely got some work to do. I'm just gonna open up my attack animation here, and while I'm in record mode, what I'm gonna do is disable the circle collider at the start of the animation, turn it on at the point of impact, and then turn it back off again a couple of frames later so that we are only actually detecting impact when the hit is landing. So that will fix the whole problem with the enemy being damaged when we walk into him. But now if we head back into our player attack script, 
we have to deal with the fact that we have all these values hard coded in and that we're always sending the enemy to the right. Now, depending on how your attack system is set up, you might have stats of your own already. I know I do. That said, if you don't, you could just declare them right here at the top of the script. You can make a public float for damage, a public vector two for the knockback angle, and also a public float again for our knockback force. And I'll just put that up here so that we keep our floats together. Now that we actually have some variables, we can change out these hard-coded numbers. So I'll just put damage in here, followed by knockback force, and finally our knockback angle. Again, the reason we're keeping these separate is so that different attacks can have different damage and knockback force amounts if you want to get a little more nuanced. Now next up, in order to make the enemy go in the right direction, we need to figure out what way the player is facing. You may already have this data somewhere in your own player controller, but in case you don't, here's one way we could get that. So we'll make an integer called facing direction. And here I'm going to make a ternary operator rather than add a bunch of if statements. We'll just say that our facing direction is equal to, now if the transform position.x, remember this is on our player, so if his position is greater than the collisions transform position.x, so again, if the player is on the right side of the enemy, then we want to send the enemy to the left, which would be a negative value. So we'll put negative one. We'll do a colon here, and if that other statement is not true, then we'll use a positive one. Again, this just saves space and is a little more economical than writing a couple of if statements. Now it's just if the player's on the right, it'll set the value to negative one. If he's on the left, it'll be a positive one. Now we can head down to our knockback angle and use that facing direction integer to make sure the enemy goes in the correct direction. So what we need to do is make a new vector, which will be the knockback angle's x value times our facing direction, so either left or right, and then we'll just use knockback angle y so that it always goes upward. Now back in Unity we can just plug those values into our player attack. So we can give it a damage of 5, let's try a knockback force of 3, and for our angle I'm going to do 1 on the x, 2 on the y since it's an uppercut, he'll go a little more upward than he does to the right. And now just before we test, don't forget to make sure that the circle collider on your weapon animation is in fact off to start, so that it doesn't bump into the enemy, dealing damage when you don't intend to. I'll click on my robot now so that I can watch whether or not his health is going down, and while things aren't going to be perfect just yet, we should have a more or less functional knockback effect. Now when we hit him from the right, he does go to the left, and his health goes down. He still gets stuck in his animation state, but he's at least going in the correct direction now. Now we just have to deal with the fact that this knockback looks terrible, and that the enemy's getting stuck in his state forever. Alright, so first improvement, let's make this look a little better. I'm going to add an animation at last to my enemy. So, I'll click on my robot, head to the animation pane, which I'll just dock up top here, and I'm going to create a new clip. I'll call this one CRT underscore damaged. And I have just a really simple animation I prepared. It's just three little frames here, and they're not much. You'll just see I have an exclamation mark. He turns yellow, though you can't really see it in the sliding. He flashes white briefly and then goes back again. I'll just grab the last frame of this animation and copy it down here so that it lasts as long as the others. And that's a little too slow, so I'll speed that up a bit, make it nice and snappy. I'll then just find it in my animation folder here and turn off loop time. I can now dock the animation tab, go to my animator, and you'll see my CRT damaged here. I'm going to create a new bool, which is just going to be called damaged, which remembers the name of our script. We'll dock it up top, make a transition to and from, and then just make sure that the damaged true gets us here. And in order to leave, we'll just take off the exit time, duration, and make sure that damaged false takes us out of the state. We've already hooked this up in our code, so there's no code necessary at this point. It should just work as long as damaged is in fact the name you gave to your animation bool in the enemy script. All right. We're able to stun him. He goes into the animation, but he's not ever leaving it. All right, a little bit of work left to do. All right, one last thing to do with our animation is just to click on the last frame here. We'll add an animation event. And while clicked on it, we can select from a list of all the methods that are on this game object, and we'll pick Animation Finished Trigger. This is essentially the same thing that we did in our melee attack state, which if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that we switch state once the Finish Trigger is called. We're just going to copy this. And then in our damaged state, we're essentially going to do the exact same thing. We'll paste that in here. I'll just take away that extra bracket I put in by accident. Now, spoiler alert, we're not done yet, but we're getting closer. 
He now no longer gets stuck in the damage state, but comes back into a patrol state. However, we're getting this strange back and forth in the air. The knockback is too floaty, and I also want to add an animation hit particle when we strike him. So let's add those changes. Now I know this is feeling like the tutorial that never ends, but I don't want to leave you with just a good system. I want to make this really feel great. So three things left to fix. Now the first problem is very easy to fix. We're just going to change patrol state here to charge state. Problem one of three solved. Next up, let's bring him down to earth a little more quickly. So before we switch states, but after we've played his damage animation, let's give him a new velocity. So we'll make our enemy's RB velocity equal to a new vector 2. It will be enemy RB velocity x, so he'll keep moving backwards because you just hit him. However, his downward velocity will be his enemy RB velocity y to the negative. So we'll take that knockback effect that sent him up nice and snappy and just make it negative. So it'll send him back downward. Now let's take that switch state method out. We're going to move that up into our logic update because we don't want to switch states immediately here or he would start charging you while he's still in the air. So to buy some time before he starts charging, we'll introduce a stun effect. So up at the top, let's make a private float called stun time as well as a bool called is stunned to keep track of whether or not he's still stunned. Now after the animation has finished playing and we've given him the downward velocity, we'll let our state know that is stunned is true. I'm actually just going to get rid of these other methods we're not using just to clean things up a bit. And now we'll just introduce a check here. So if we are stunned, we'll check to see how long it is that we've been in this state. So we'll check if time.time .time is greater than our enemy state time, which is when we entered the state, plus stun time. Essentially just waiting the one or two seconds, however long your stun is, until we run the next line. Once we've been in this state for whatever our stun time is, We'll now set is stunned equal to false, as we won't need to be stunned anymore. And now at last we can switch state to the charge state. So now when we finish the damaged animation, we'll send our enemy down to earth at a quick speed, set is stunned true, wait till our stun time's over, and then at last send the enemy back to charge state. Now we just need to deal with that final problem. The enemy knowing which direction he's been hit from so that when he lands, he turns to face the player. For this we're going to create a new integer called force direction which, like with our facing direction, will be negative if the force came from the left and positive if it's from the right. This will be equal to the enemy's rigidbodyvelocity.x, so the direction he's currently going in, and if it's greater than zero. So if it is greater than zero, he's moving to the right, in which case we would do a, a negative one, meaning he was hit from the left. And if his velocity is less than one, that means he's going left, which meant he was hit from the right. Now we're just going to compare this to his facing direction, which we're already keeping track of in the enemy script. And essentially, if his facing direction doesn't match the direction the force came from, we're going to need to rotate him. Now we've already written a rotate method over here in our enemy patrol state. Now since we're going to want to access this from other states, I'm actually going to cut it out of here for now. And we're going to head over to our enemy script where we'll put it so that it is more accessible by multiple states. We can actually just scroll down to the bottom paste it in there, and we can get rid of the enemy lines as we're already in the enemy script. So this rotate function will still be the same as always, making our enemy rotate 180 degrees and then changing our facing direction bool. Now while I'm here, I just need to make sure that I make this public so our other states can actually talk to it. Now, in our patrol state, we just have to say enemy.rotate, and similarly over here in damaged state, we can now also put enemy.rotate. So he'll now face the correct direction so he can charge at the player in the right direction. One final note is just that I forgot to set my stun time. So up here for stun time, I'm going to set mine to one second. And now in Unity, I've got a much snappier looking effect. The enemy charges me immediately after landing. He is briefly stunned first, of course. And when I hit him from behind, he knows to turn and attack. All right, all that's left now is to add our hit particle. Now this will be very similar to how we set up the hit particle earlier for when the enemy hits the player. I'm even going to reuse the same graphics. So I'll create a new game object. I won't make it a child of anything just yet. I'll pull up my animation tab here and I'm just going to create a new animation. I'll call this one CRT hit particle. I'm then just going to drag in my hit particles, the same ones from last time. I'll drag them out, copy the last ones so that it lasts a little longer than the others. Then while I'm hitting record, I'm just going to go to the end here where I'll give it an alpha of 0. It will then have a marker at the beginning where the alpha is fully opaque, which I'll just drag here toward the end, maybe to my third last frame of the animation, so that it fades out 
over the end of the animation. Looks pretty good. I'll dock my animation tab back down here. I'm now going to grab this hip particle and make it a child of the CRT robot. I'll then just make sure to zero out the transform so that it's actually on top of the robot. And now we just need to bring that in front. So on our sprite renderer, we're just going to set the order in layer to say 10. Though I might just adjust this one a little higher as my player will generally attack him higher up. Looking good. All right, now if I look in my animator, this is currently set as my default, meaning it'll play as soon as the game starts, which is not what we want. So let's create an empty. I'll call this one idle. And I'll right click and set that as the default state. Now we'll call the CRT hit particle from our code, but we do need to make a transition to leave it. Here I'll just make my exit time one and my duration zero. Remember an exit time of one means it will play the full animation before exiting. All that's left to do now is to call this from our script. I'll come down here where other damage related variables are held and I'll make a reference to the animator. This will be the hit particle one. I'm then just going to close up those variables and head down to our damage method. Here right at the start of the method we'll make the visual appear. So we'll call up our animator and tell it to play. Here it's important we use the exact name of this animation here, which I'm actually just for streamlining things, I'm just going to call it hit particle so that we can use the same name for all of our enemies. So here we'll ask it to play hit particle. Now congratulations on surviving this marathon tutorial. All that's left to do now is to click on our robot and make sure that he actually knows where to find this animator. So we'll drag the hit particle into the hit particle box. Now at last we have the ability to damage our enemy, to knock him back in a nice snappy way with a good looking animation. We still have to create a death state for the enemy, and I'd like to add sound effects and a whole lot more, but we're going to save those for another video. Until that time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.